Hi, this is Jonathan Rotz, field agronomist with Pioneer, and just wanted to take another moment here to talk a little bit about some other successful techniques for uh, next year's crop. What I wanted to do today was just talk a little bit about our planter setup. So one of the first steps in the spring to a successful crop obviously is getting a good stand, and that has a tremendous amount to do with our planter. We all know yield is established at planting, and and actually there's been a, there's a study by Nielsen that shows that even an inch off in your planting can lead up to almost three bushels of yield loss. And even substantial declines can be from the whole leader or follower, especially if it's past seven days. And all of these things are, are products of our planting job. So this means that our planter has to be in top shape for the spring. And obviously right now, when we've got some time, this is the best time to think about getting that planter set up. So I just want to talk us through a little things, some of the major places that we want to take and look uh, at our planter and what, it, what we're going to need to have that tip-top planting shape. I can't cover everything here, uh, so, and I can't cover every model and type, but um, please refer to your owner's manual as well as your local service personnel for other things. One of the first places to look in planter is actually in the parallel arms. When you have your parallel arms, it's going to allow that planter to move up and down uh, vertically without any lateral shift. You need to make sure those parallel arms are stiff and rigid and don't allow for slop in them. Another thing is to look, while you're looking at that, the planter drive system making sure any chains, things like that, are well lubed, as well as there's no kinks or knots in that planter chain. If you have an electronic drive, take a look at your volts and amps coming back there to make sure that all of that is up to par as well. The next part is to look at your double disc openers. Your double disc openers, um, there's a couple easy ways to look at it. One thing they say to take two business cards and put them in the double disc opener and you should have it two inches apart. If you look also, a lot of times about a half inch wear is the maximum that you're allowed on these double disc openers. So you can take your old double disc and measure uh, what the maximum wear point would be. And if it's below that, obviously you need to change those. A next great place to look is the gauge wheels. These gauge wheels should be tight against your double disc opener and it should move up and down effortlessly without any gaps or flop to them as well. We're gonna remove some gauge wheels and take a look inside, and you're gonna to wanna to take a look at a seed tube guard. That seed tube guard has two purposes. Number one, obviously it protects the seed tube uh, so that it doesn't wear, but number two, it also will not allow that gauge wheel to rub against the seed tube creating vibration. If that seed tube shows anywhere, you don't only want to replace the seed tube, you're also going to want to replace the seed tube guard. So again, at this point, we also want to pull that seed tube and take a look at the end of it, make sure it's not wearing at all. If it would be worn, not only replacing the seed tube, but also replacing that guard. Our belt drive planters, we have a lot of planters that instead of just having a traditional seed tube, are going to have a belt drive. Uh, if, we, if we have a planter like that, we want to check that belt, make sure that it's not tremendously worn. We also want to make sure that we don't have an excess buildup of seed treatment or anything like that on that belt either that could create an issue. If you have a finger pickup type planter, you want to take a look at that meter and, and do some maintenance on as well. Obviously, your double eliminator brush, uh, you need to um, check for wear or probably just replace that itself. You want to look for any damaged or worn fingers as well as checking the springs on those to make sure they have good tension. And you want that face to be nice and smooth, making sure there's no wear marks or grooves down in the face. If you have a vacuum planter, it's really important to check at that disc, make sure that in the whole vacuum system you're not having excessive leaks, that your vacuum is maintaining constant. You want to check again if any of those points are worn, if, if any of your discs or anything have wear on them as well as making sure that that doubles eliminator is intact and in good shape. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to actually want to take and either pull the planter out into a driveway or something like that or in the shop, we'll take and put that planter down and move it forward just a few feet, a couple inches to a foot, 
And what we want to do is we want to make sure that where the double disc is at is aligned directly between the closing wheels. We don't want those closing wheels off one side or the other. If they are, it'll create too much compaction right on the seed row, and a lot of times it will not allow for a good closing. The very last thing would be to take that planter, put it out in the field, take it down the entire way, and check for the level of your toolbar. This level is extremely important. If you have your toolbar cocked one way or the other, you're either going to be lifting that closing system out and putting excessive pressure down on your double disc, or the opposite way, you'll be putting a tremendous amount of pressure down on that closing wheel. Either one of those is obviously going to be bad for getting a really good closed um, seed trench and obviously getting the best place for that seed to start its life out well and get the maximum yield. So again, I hope this has been helpful and informative to you. If you have any questions, you can contact myself, your, your Pioneer sales rep, or uh, any of your service techs with your planter. Hopefully you guys can have a, a great winter, get a lot of that maintenance done, and get ready to go get the absolute maximum yield out of your Pioneer products next spring. Thanks a bunch. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.